Hey, I'm Josh. In this video, I'll show you how to make your very own add-on for Blender that will let you choose an object from the scene, and when you press a button, it will focus the view on that object without changing the selection. Just a word of warning, this video will make a lot more sense if you know something about Python programming. Python knowledge is actually required if you want to write Blender add-ons. If you want to learn the basics of Python, there are plenty of good tutorials online, and I'll put one in the description below. First, you'll need to set up your environment. I'll be using Blender version 2.82, but this tutorial will probably keep working for most of the 2.8 series. And for my code editor, I'll be using Visual Studio Code. I'll put some links to these pieces of software in the description. They are all free. Let's make a little script. Open up Visual Studio Code and make a new file. Save it somewhere as centeronobjectaddon.py. For any add-on, you need to start with a dictionary called bl underscore info. This dictionary contains the description of your add-on and it has some standard entries. Name is the name of the add-on. Category is basically whatever you want. Have a look at the list of categories in Blender for ideas. Author is just your name. Version is the version of your add-on. 1,0,0 will appear as 1.0.0 in Blender. Blender is the version of Blender this add-on is written for. Location is a little description that turns up in the add-ons list that tells you where to find your add-on in Blender's user interface. In this case, I'll say that you can find it in the View tab in the sidebar of the 3D view, the one that you can bring up by pressing the N key. And description, well, that's pretty self-explanatory. And this is what this description will look like in the add-ons list in Blender. Next, you'll always need to add import BPY. The BPY library contains Blender's entire API with all the operators, lists of scenes, objects, materials, everything. You will also need to keep a list of Python classes that you plan on adding to Blender. Blender also expects your add-on to contain two functions, register and unregister, which are called when Blender loads and unloads your add-on respectively. For a simple add-on, we can call a helpful function which basically writes register and unregister for us. However, for this project, we will need to customize the register and unregister functions, so let's just write them manually. To load this into Blender, go Edit, Preferences, go to Add-ons, then click Install. Select your Pi file, and then click Install Add-on. You might want to add the folder with your add-on to your favorites, so you don't have to find it every time. Check the box on the left of your add-on in the list, and it should be enabled. If you reinstall the add-on, you may need to restart Blender for it to work. There are ways to have the add-on automatically reloaded, but I won't cover that in this video. Now we can actually start adding features to Blender. Back in our Python file, let's create a custom operator that, for now, centers the view on any object called cube. First write a class for the operator. This needs to inherit from bpy.types.operator. Add a string to the start of the class definition to describe it. Any button for this operator in Blender will show this string in the button tooltip. Each operator needs some annotations. BL underscore ID name has to be a unique name that will not conflict with any other operator. Keep it lowercase with underscores and dots. From Blender's Python console window, you will be able to invoke this operator by writing bpy.ops.view3d.centerOnCustomObject and then call it as a function. BL underscore label specifies the text that will appear on a button for this operator. Then, most importantly, we need the execute function, which actually does stuff when the operator is executed. The context argument right here can be used to get relevant data from Blender, like the current scene or the current selected objects. The way you should think about this execute function is that it just presses Blender's buttons for you in the order that you specify. So first, we will deselect everything. Then, select the object called cube. Then this will center the view to the selected object, i.e. the cube. Here's a tip. To find the name of an operation, go Edit, Preferences, Interface, Display, and turn on Python tooltips. You can then hover over any action in Blender, such as View, Frame Selected in the 3D view, and it will show you the Python code that will be executed when you click it. Execute must return a set of strings, which will usually look just like this unless something goes wrong. 
Remember that empty list of classes we made earlier? Let's add the new operator to that list. Here's another tip. If you want to use Google to get help for using Blender's add-on APIs, then instead of searching for Blender, just search for BPY, then the thing that you want. For example, BPY, select object with name, and one of the first results will usually be what you want. Now, if you reload this add-on in Blender, you'll be able to press F3 and search for center cube, then the operator will be there and you can execute it. Let's add that as a button in the 3D Views sidebar, as we promised in the add-ons description. First, we'll add a custom panel class that inherits bpy.types.panel. Like operators, panels also need a unique ID that doesn't conflict with anything else. It's standard for panels in the 3D view to start with view 3 d underscore pt underscore, all in capitals. BL space type is the type of editor the panel will be added to. Setting BL region type to UI means that the panel will go somewhere in the 3D view sidebar that you can bring up by pressing the N key. BL category is the name of the sidebar tab to install the panel under. And BL label is the heading of the panel itself. Now we'll define the draw function, which describes the actual layout of the panel within the sidebar. For now, we'll just add the operator as a button. And of course, don't forget to add it to the classes list. If you then reinstall the add-on, you will find there's a new panel in the 3D sidebar under the view tab. Clicking the button will execute our custom operator. So right now, there needs to be an object named cube in the scene, or this operator will just break. It would be much nicer if we could select a particular object in the scene for this button to work on. You may or may not have noticed that at the bottom of most setting tabs is a panel called Custom Properties. This section shows the list of custom properties that have been added to a particular resource type in Blender. Each individual scene, object, material, you name it, has its own list of these custom properties. You can manually add to these lists, but usually they will be managed automatically by add-ons. Basically, this means your custom add-on can store as much extra data as you like with any Blender resource, and that data will be saved out to a Blend file and loaded back in automatically. What we'll do is add a custom property to the current scene, so you can choose an object per scene to center the view on. So down here in the register function, we'll add a pointer property. A pointer property is a property that keeps track of a particular resource in Blender. If you were to delete that tracked resource, the pointer property is automatically reset to nothing. We only want to be able to track Blender objects with this property, not materials or scenes, for example. So let's set the type to object and give the property a name. Then add the object's picker or selector to the sidebar above the button. So here's that object picker we just created in Blender. I don't really like this text here, so I'm just gonna remove it. That's better. Now we need the operator to center on this particular object and not just the one called cube. So we'll modify the execute function on the operator. And let's update the operator description to match the behavior. Reinstall the add-on and we're good to go. If you set the custom object to nothing, then we get this confusing error. So let's fix that. If there is no selected object, then I'll report an error message and return immediately from the function. Note that the operator currently changes the selection, which doesn't seem right, so let's just add a quick fix for that. I'll make a record of what objects were selected before we do the operation, and then at the end, I'll deselect everything and reselect the ones that were selected before. And we're done! There's a lot more I could do here, but I'll save that for later videos. I've been working on a game called Mansion, and you can see the devlog for that on this channel. That's all for now. I hope you found this tutorial helpful. I'm going to keep posting videos regularly, so please subscribe to this channel if you want to see more. And please let me know what you think.